If you're interviewing for a professional job, it's almost guaranteed that you're going to encounter a virtual interview at some point. And in this video, I'm going to share some tips on how to look and perform your best in that virtual interview. Hey everybody, it's Brian from A Life After Layoff, and today I wanna to talk to you about virtual interviews because as we go through our interviewing process, you're sure to encounter virtual interviews as part of an early screen. But before we get too far into it, if you're interested in more career-related content just like this, hit that subscribe button. All right, let's talk virtual interviews, and this video is gonna be primarily focused on professional-level jobs, Hourly positions, you may find yourself going on site as a first round interview, but generally speaking with professional roles, you're probably gonna be speaking to a recruiter first. And usually that first round interview is going to be conducted on Zoom, Google Meet, MS Teams, or some other virtual interviewing software. So the first thing that you wanna do is mind your background. I highly recommend that you pick a place that's secluded, whether it's an office, or some area in your house that is away from the clutter. And the reason being is that backgrounds can tend to be distracting to an interviewer and you can inadvertently be judged by what's going on in the background. As a recruiter, I've seen a lot of different scenarios. I've seen people in their bedrooms interviewing with loads of laundry behind them on their bed. I've also seen some personal objects and items that probably I shouldn't have been seeing. And I always feel a little bit weird as a recruiter peeking into somebody's most private area, which is a bedroom. I've also conducted interviews where the person is sitting in a living room and they've got pets running by, they've got kids playing in the background and toys strewn everywhere. And listen, I've got kids, I've got tons of toys everywhere in my house, so I totally get it. But some hiring managers may have an issue with it and you just don't wanna give them any reason to be distracted. I would take the time to try to find a relatively clean, clear place that has a backdrop that is relatively simple. Even if you have to move into a room where you can put a white wall behind you. And if you just don't have a place like that in your house, very minimum, clean up your background, clean up the clutter that's on the floor, make sure that all your personal stuff is put away or at least angle the camera so that I can't see it. And even better, consider doing a blurred virtual background because that can also help remove the distraction. But the bottom line is, is mind your background and avoid that clutter. And while you're at it, avoid those interruptions. If you know you're gonna be interviewing, put the dog in another room, tell your family, tell your kids that you have a very important call and that you can't be interrupted because you don't wanna have that distraction happening behind you. Now, there's gonna be times where things will happen that are beyond your control. Maybe the FedEx or Amazon driver decides to leave a package right as you're about to deliver a very big answer and the dog starts to bark. And I remember one time where I was in an interview and somebody's car alarm started going off and it just kept on going off and off and off and it was super distracting, but there was nothing that we could do about it. And there's no way to avoid that, but what I'm talking about is the controllable interruptions. Try to make sure that your interview setting is as clear of distractions as possible. I would also recommend put your phone on vibrate or better yet, leave it in a different room so that you don't have the distraction in front of you. And well before you get on the call, and in fact, I would recommend that you do this at least the day before, is log into the virtual interview and make sure that you have a clean, clear connection. Sometimes you'll have to download some software. Well, the last thing you wanna do is wait till five minutes before your interview to decide to test the client only to discover that you have to do a major download and update and then your computer decides to restart on you. And you don't wanna put yourself into that situation because when you do log into the interview and you're five or six minutes late because of it, you're gonna be frazzled and the interview team is probably gonna think that you don't have your act together. And that's certainly not a great first impression that we wanna leave. So test your equipment, make sure everything works properly beforehand. And while we're on the topic of software and equipment, I would recommend that you try to do your interview on a desktop computer because those clients in general are designed to work well with the desktop environment. And you're gonna be more comfortable and more prepared when you're sitting in front of a desktop. It's gonna simulate a work setting a little bit more closely. If your phone is your only option, I would highly encourage you to get a tripod that you can use so that you don't have to hold your phone out in front of you. And just like this one, and you can get these pretty cheap on Amazon. In fact, I'll leave a link for this one. The nice thing about this is not only does it hold your phone, but it also acts like a ring light. So if you don't have good lighting, you can plug this into a USB port and you can provide a little extra lighting for yourself. So I highly recommend if you're going to do the interview on your phone, do it with this. And if you have to do it on your phone, I would highly recommend that you don't do it in your car unless it's absolutely unavoidable, which maybe you're in an office and you're stepping out to take the call. I would just let the interviewer know beforehand that you're gonna be indisposed because you're in an office setting and it will look a little strange for you to excuse yourself. But if you can help it, try to slip into a conference room that might be off the beating path to take the call. 
it would be a little bit more professional. But there is one that is an absolute deal breaker. Do not be driving in a car when you're taking this phone call. Not only is it supremely distracting for the interviewer, but it's also a safety hazard. And it shows that you don't have an eye for safety or you don't manage your time properly. Because if you accept an interview with a company, think of the message that that sends. If you're not prepared to take the call, you should have never scheduled it at that point in time. And quite frankly, I won't take an interview with somebody who's driving a car because I don't want to take the responsibility of if they get into an accident and they were distracted. And while we're talking about equipment, if you don't have a good camera and microphone situation, I would look at upgrading that, especially if you're doing a lot of interviewing, you can get a very decent and relatively inexpensive webcam and or microphone that will really improve the quality of your calls. If you don't have a good microphone, at the very least, use a set of earbuds or something that you can connect to your computer that has a decent microphone built in. As much as I love this headset and I use it all the time, I would not recommend that you use this in an interview because it's going to look super distracting. So avoid trying to do anything big and clunky on your head. And since we're making that all important first impression on the employer, we wanna make sure that we're dressed properly. And in most cases, you should be able to do business casual. And unless it's a very traditional company, potentially something in banking. When in doubt, check with the recruiter because there's absolutely no shame confirming what the expected dress code would be. And now we've got everything set up and when we're actually in the call, there's a few things that I wanna point out that are critically important. The first thing is, is you wanna maintain really good eye contact. It can be very distracting if your camera is over here, yet your screen is over here. So you might be seeing them over here and they're actually seeing you from the side. While you're over here looking at them off screen, they're actually seeing the side version of you where you're looking off into the distance. So try to get your camera as close to where their zoom is as possible. If you're on a laptop, it's probably not that big of a deal, but if you're working off multiple monitors and you have a webcam, just make sure that you keep that in mind. Furthermore, I've had candidates who were very, I don't know if it was nervous or something, but were not able to maintain good eye contact. They kept on looking up, looking around, looking down, fidgeting with things. And to me, that conveys that you're not very confident and you wanna show confidence in a virtual interview setting. So eye contact is crucially important. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to maintain strict eye contact the entire time because that would be probably uncomfortable as well, but just be natural. And while you're at it, and I hate to even have to say this, but don't read off of a script. If you're somebody that likes to prepare for your interview by writing out all possible answers to all possible questions, then that's a recipe for disaster. Because when you start to do that and they ask you a question, and you start scanning through your notes and you're scrolling trying to find it, not only will the interviewer likely know that you're scrolling for an answer and you're reading off of a script, but number two, you're gonna sound robotic. And number three, if you can't find the answer quick enough, you're gonna start panicking because you're gonna be more worried about finding the right answer quickly and that can really trip you up. And once you go on tilt, and that's an old poker term for losing your cool, it can be a downward spiral. So be very careful not to read from the script. And I also have to throw out, don't ever Google your answers or the definition of a term that they're trying to inquire about because they will 100% know that that's what you're doing. And I have absolutely had candidates do this on me and I can always tell when they're doing it and I've had them do it with hiring managers. In fact, I remember one very distinct interview not too terribly long ago that a hiring manager came back and said, I'm almost positive that they were Googling their answers because I could hear typing, they were scanning with their eyes, and suddenly they gave me a very textbook definition of something that I was asking about. And because they Googled the answer, and it was very obvious that they didn't have the competency for that job, the hiring manager opted to go in a different direction. So it's better to say that you don't have the experience and then give them an example of how you've learned something new in the past that can show the competency instead. But when you Google the answer, you're not fooling anybody and it's not gonna be a good look on you. Then of course, as you go through the rest of your interview, you wanna just use good interview strategy like you would use for any virtual interview or in-person interview. And if you're not sure how to do that, I actually created a course called the 48 Hour Interview Crash Course. And that's designed to get you ready for just about any major interview in as little as 48 hours. And it's very concise and targeted and pulls together everything that you're gonna need to perform well in the interview at hand. So if you're somebody that's struggling and you have a big upcoming interview, I would highly encourage you to check that out so that you're perfectly prepared. And if you need more help in your interviewing process, that's what I specialize in. I've got a website called a lifeafterlayoff.com and it's loaded with tips and tricks all from an insider's perspective. Head over there, there's a ton of resources there for you. A lot of them are free. And there's also some training courses that you can check out in addition to the 48 hour interview crash course. So good luck on your interview. Hopefully these tips help you perform and hit it out of the park. But remember, it's all about interview preparation. Be comfortable and natural, and I'm sure you'll do great. Like always, appreciate you watching, and we'll see you on the next one.